Hi everyone, Starving Photographer here again, and today we're going to do something fun. We're going to take two completely different images from completely different places and combine them to create a compelling image. This is just for fun, this is not documentary, this is art. So I hope you enjoy what I'm about to show you and hopefully you can implement it in your images. Basically, I'm going to take the Milky Way from one image and place it over another image. The Milky Way sky is here, this was taken on an A7R2 Sony camera, a huge megapixel file, uh, you know, almost 8,000 by 5,000 pixels. And this was, this was taken in Oregon. And this one was taken in Nepal. This is the Himalayan mountain range that you see here. And this is the city of Pokhara up down here. And we're basically going to replace this sky with the Milky Way image here, okay? This image, by the way, was taken on a Sony RX10 Mark IV. The image size is much smaller, about 5500 by 3600. So we will have to account for that when we replace the sky. I'm going to open up these two images in Photoshop by shift clicking this, so both images are selected. I'm going to two finger click or right click and say edit in edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2018. I'm not going to choose open as layers as I did on previous tutorials because I want these two images to come up as separate files, not a single file with two layers. So I'm going to say edit in Adobe Photoshop CC 2018. And here are the two images. Here is the mountainscape image and here is the Milky Way image. So the mountainscape image, let's see what the file dimension of this is. I'm going to say image, image size. And this is 5472 by 3648. I'm going to match the other image to the same pixel dimension. Let's go to our Milky Way image, image size. I'm going to change this value to, what was that, 5472. And this value to 3648. If you notice that these two values change in tandem, in other words, when you change this value, this value automatically was changed for you. That's probably because you have this constraint aspect ratio selected. I have that deselected so I can change these two values independently. As far as resampling, I just say automatic. That does a pretty good job. I'm going to go OK. So now the pixel dimensions of this image matches the pixel dimension of our other image. So I'm going to select everything here by going Command or Open Apple A, select all, Command C for copy, and I'm going to go to this image, and I'm just going to paste over this. Command V to paste over this. So I'm going to hide this layer for a second by touching this eye icon. And I'm going to make the canvas a little larger on the top because I need to move or slide my Milky Way image a little higher and I need a little bit more real estate up here. I'm going to go to Image, Canvas Size, and I'm going to make the square just to give myself as much room as possible. You can choose whatever value you want, but if you choose square, you can always crop it later. I'm going to choose 22.8 and I'm going to go from the bottom up. This means the canvas will increase from bottom up anchoring at the bottom. So I'm going to hit OK and here we go. The canvas has increased on the top. If I hit Command 0, that fits it to screen and let's see our Milky Way's layer again. And I'm going to change the opacity of the Milky Way layer so I can see through it a little bit to see how much I have to move it up or down. So I'm going to change the opacity to about 50% or 40% or so. I'm going to make sure this Move tool is selected. If I hold the Shift key down and move it, you notice it moves in that only dimension. So I'm going to try to match the margin here uh, with the margin of the Himalayas, which is over here. So I'm not going to move it up too much. Again, this with that but this is going to reach this margin a lot quicker than this is going to meet, meet that. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going up, 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 so that about there. So we'll get a nice Milky Way in the sky, but not a huge Milky Way. 
I'm going to change the opacity back to 100%. And I'm going to make sure that this layer is selected. Create a mask here. And then you notice it's white. So don't worry if it's white or black because it doesn't really matter. At this point, we're going to leave it at white. And then we're going to choose the gradient tool, which is selected by hitting G key or just this icon right here. One thing I want to point out is make sure in the type of gradient you've selected, make sure it's foreground to transparent and not foreground to background. This is probably the biggest mistake I see people make. I'm going to make sure again the mask layer is selected and not the image layer. I'm going to apply the gradient from the bottom to the top, replacing the bottom of the image here with the bottom of the image below it. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to come up pretty high. If I hold the shift key down, it makes a nice straight gradient. And here is our image. And so it's a nice faded gradient. There's a little bit of overlap of stars over here, which looks a little unnatural, but don't worry about that because we can reapply that gradient. So if I do this gradient again, except I start from here and go a little angled, that's getting better. And same thing over here. Keep reapplying that gradient. And that's what this foreground or transparent allows you to do. As you apply this gradient, it gets multiplied on top of each other. If you had just selected the foreground uh, to background, each time you apply the gradient, it would just replace the prior gradient. And we don't want that. We want it to multiply and we want to sort of carve out the shape of the gradient. And this is what allows you to do that. And here it's a little bit too bright, so I'm going to uh, go the other way. In other words, I'm going to take the Milky Way sky and try to replace a little bit of this. And I do that by hitting the X key which basically ch changes the black to white. And I'm going to come down this way and see how that looks. See, I made a mistake over here. I came down too much of an angle. I'm going to undo that and just go this way. That's a little better. You know, just a little, maybe a little bit more. That's pretty good. And right now, it's looking okay. There's a little bit of star over here, but I'm not going to worry about that. I can always change that uh, later on. So at this point, the blend is okay, but the brightness values are off. In other words, this is too bright for this. And that's easily fixable. We can either make the sky brighter or the foreground darker or a combination of two. I'm going to first try the foreground, uh, make that a little darker, uh, and maybe a little add a little contrast and see how we can get that. And we may even have to tweak the white balance a little bit. So make sure my background layer is selected. And I'm going to say layers, new adjustment layer. And I'm going to select Levels. And when the dialog box comes up, make sure you have this Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask selected. So it's applying it just to that layer. And you notice see how there's a little arrow that comes up saying that the effect of this Levels change is only affecting this layer. So here it is. I'm going to make it a little darker until the sky sort of matches the sky of the Milky Way, something like this. So you want a little bit of glow here because it looks like some of the light is coming from the right-hand side. And this part is a little darker and you want that to match as much as possible and it's doing that. And I'm going to say OK. So the only thing is now the foreground is very, very dark. There's absolutely no detail there. So we can gradient out the effect just like we did on the other image. So you notice a mask has already been created for you and that mask has been selected. I am now going to apply the gradient on this mask to bring out some more detail here. I'm going to hit the G key uh, if something else is selected. And here it is. I'm going to go from the bottom to the top as we did before. You notice now nothing happened and that's okay. That just means that our black to white or white to black was not properly set. You can do that by hitting this key or hitting the X button. I'm going to hit the X button and I'm going to apply that gradient again and see more of the detail has come through. Maybe too much detail. And you fix this by fading the gradient. And this is how you do it. You go up to Edit, Fade Gradient. So instead of applying 100% opacity, we're going to go down to maybe 50. And that's looking better. So now maybe this, this area could be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to apply another gradient like this. Okay, And maybe a little bit on this side. Again, maybe too much, so fade that gradient. Like so. That's pretty good. 
I like the way this part of the sky looks as far as brightness, but the white balance is a little off. So I'm going to make this Milky Way a little bluer or maybe a little bit more purple to match the sky over here. So I'm going to select the Milky Way layer. I'm going to go to uh, Image, Adjust, and I use the Photo Filter tool. And instead of the warming filter, I'm going to choose a violet filter. And you can adjust the density of the violet filter as much as you want. So I think maybe about that matches the sky a little bit more with the foreground before and after. It's looking pretty good. Okay. And I can even brighten up the sky a little bit. I'm going to try that just to see how it is. You don't want to brighten up the sky too much in a Milky Way image because that'll introduce some noise. But let's see how we can do this. I'm going to go to Layers, New Adjustment Layer. And again, I'm going to choose uh, Levels. And again, I'm going to make sure the Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask is selected because I want only that Milky Way layer to be affected. And I'm going to make it a little brighter just to see how it looks. Match a little bit. Yeah, that's matching it a little bit better, I think. And don't worry about the contrast and the clarity. We can always adjust that later on. Okay. So this is looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go to 100% and clean up any of the stars that have outlined over the mountains. And that's very easy to do. Um, let's go to 100% by Open Apple or Command 1. And as I look through here, I see maybe this area right here has too many stars on the mountains. So I'm going to go to the layer uh, over here and the Milky Way and I'm going to just mask that out with a brush tool. I'm going to hit the B for brush. Make sure that this is flow is 100%, opacity is 100%, and change your brush size accordingly. I'm going to make it a little smaller and just go right over this area here. Okay, good. Maybe over here. Rest of the image I think looks really good. Maybe the stars over here are a little bit too much. Maybe a little guy over here, a little over there. Let's look at the set decreased here. This is looking actually quite good, I think. If you notice, there's some banding here. That's only because we have multiple layers and Photoshop doesn't render everything at the fullest resolution. If we flatten this image by going layers, flatten image, that gets, that gets taken care of. So now I'm just going to crop out the white stuff, hit the C key, bring this down like so, hit return, and voila, we are now back in Lightroom. Here is the before images, left and right, center is after. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe. Thank you very much.